Right, we've been looking at how God speaks to us, and uh, the last few times we looked at God speaks to us through the Bible, and we need to understand the crucial importance of the Word of God. And I cannot, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for you to read God's Word. If you're not reading God's Word on a daily basis, you are at a loss. Okay? And I guarantee you, not I think, I know most of the church, the universal church of Jesus Christ. In other words, all congregations, churches, Christians, majority do not read the Bible. Okay? And John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? So do not come with me with uh, the translation and the, these errors. They are insignificant. Okay? If you want to know God, if you want to know His heart, you need to read the Word of God. If you know, want to please Him, you need to know the Word of God. Okay? So that is one of the main ways that God speaks to His people. Okay? And then secondly, we looked at God speaks to us through His Spirit where He prompts us and we read the Scriptures and he suddenly this thing and he, or we're going along and suddenly we feel, I need to go and see Pit Pompis and we go and see Him and God just uses us to minister into His life. That is the Spirit of God speaking to us. And today we're going to look at God speaks to us through the fivefold ministry. Now, it was quite funny. I, I got home and I was informed two days later I need to do a funeral in Kruger's Dorp. And I, I thought, you know, how am I going to get there? And God just opened a door. Someone from Polokwane said he'll take me up and bring me home. So it was fabulous. He, he actually went there. So, But we had uh, basically, I suppose, a theological debate from when we left here to when we got there. Um, other than a little bit of getting to know one another better. But it, it was... It was so fabulous chatting, and uh, and I spoke to him, and he and and I seems mentioned something about the fivefold ministry. What he, what's that? Yet he's a mature. I would class him as a mature Christian in certain aspects. And um, for those of you that don't know what the fivefold ministry is, we're talking about um, the what apostle. What is this? The prophet, this, what's this, evangelist, what is this, the pastor, and this, the teacher, okay? We're talking about those five. But I think I would like to ask you, if you have to put the main mission of the church, what would you say, if you had to tell me the main mission of the church of Jesus Christ, what is it? Give me a scripture. What is the, no, no, a scripture. If mm, no, the mission I said. What do you, would you say is the main mission of the church? Sorry, spread the word of God. And what scripture is that? Therefore, go and make disciples. Oh, it's uh, next page. It's not this. Yeah. Therefore, go and make disciples of. Who, who, sorry, I, may I ask, who is the scripture given to? Who did Jesus give it to? A select few of 12 or to everyone? What did it say? Therefore, and he gives it to us today, every one of us. Therefore, all of us are to go. And then it says, make disciples, make followers. A disciple is a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then what does it say? Who must baptize? The pastor? The Dwemini? Where do you get that false doctrine? This is the problem in the church. This was given to everyone. You are called to do that. Just as much as I'm called. Okay? Then it carries on and says to baptize them. Then it's in the name of the Father, Son, of the Holy Spirit. And then teaching them. Who is to teach them? In other words, you are imp to impart what you have received. The problem is, what, if you don't know it, whose fault is it? And that's what we're going to look at today. Okay? To teach them to obey everything I've commanded, and then God says, and I will be with you. Jesus said, and I will be with you to the very end of the age. Don't worry. Yeah, but <gasps> how am I going to do this? Don't worry. Chill out. Oh, I'm ill-equipped. Uh, chill out. 
I will be with you. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit when he left to rem bring us bring back to remembrance that which we have learned. But if you've never learned, how is he going to bring it back to remembrance? If you've never read his scriptures, how, you ever, how is he ever going to bring it back to remembrance? The problem is that most of us do not fulfill this mandate because we feel, number one, ill-equipped. Am I right? Some feel ill-equipped. What's another reason? We feel unworthy, which should not be the case, because nothing makes us worthy of salvation except the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, His grace and His favor, nothing else. You cannot work to earn His salvation. Okay? So we, that's actually a non-entity, shouldn't be. So what else? I don't know why we'd be embarrassed, but I understand what you're saying. Fear of what? Fear of man, thinking we're not good enough to share all this nonsense. What else? Think that we're crazy. What else? Okay, so we're ill-equipped. What else? Don't want to offend people. What else? Concentrate more on ourselves, more interested in our own comfort than speaking out the truth. It, I find it scary the day and age that we live in. But God is wanting to, to change that. So, w if we feel immature and unable, whose fault is that? Our own. Our own. Okay, I like that answer. Who, who would you, with the rest of you, whose fault is that? If you're immature. Your own, okay. Some of you are thinking, what would you say, Simon? You're th deep in thought there. Whose fault is it? The pastor's fault. <laughs> you know, that I knew Ronaldo would say, why do you think I never asked him? <laughs> it is the le church leadership's fault, on condition. On condition that you go to church every Sunday. Okay? and that you have been a Christian for years, then, if you're still not immature, then I say yes, you are 100% correct. Thank you for that. Then yes, it is the pastors, but it's not the pa pastors, it's the leadership fault. Oh, how, why do you say that? Because I listen to what the Word of God says, and I base my belief system and doctrine and teaching on God's Word, and not in tradition. Okay, so let's have a look what is the word of God says, and we need to make sure that we model our, our everything in the church based on scripture. And I think, and I know one of the major reasons that there is so much immaturity in the church is we don't model our uh, equipping, our running, our functioning of the church based on scripture. We base it on tradition that has been handed down through the decades, centuries, whatever you want to Here's a riddle I thought I'd share with you. Uh, this is something I made up. There are two things, only two things, okay, that you cannot do in heaven. One of them you have to do here on earth. Okay? One of them you have to do here on earth. You won't do this in heaven, okay? The riddle is, there are two things that you will not do in heaven. Wow, well done. That's one you should do. Well done. Clever little girl. Boom, she got it right, okay? But there's another thing that you will not do in heaven and you shouldn't do here on earth. What is that? Sin, well done, who said that? Ronaldo, hey, my man. Do you do that? Too much? Oh, no, man. Okay, then let's come to the thing that you should be doing. Do you at least witness? Too little. <laughs> Hey, what is the answer? We've swapped it around. The very thing that we shouldn't do, we're doing, and the thing that we should do, we don't do. It is crazy. And God wants to change that. But he appointed the fivefold ministry for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So we're going to read here in Ephesians. If you would put that on for me, please. 
so that we cannot be confused by the gifts that God gives the church. And it reads as follows. But to each one of us, in other words, every single one of us, the grace has, be gi has, has been given as Christ appointed it. Who, did it, who appointed the, these gifts? Hey? Uh, sorry, a portion. Who apportioned these gifts? Jesus. To who? To every one of us, okay? But listen cle clearly. That is why it's, it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What did he, does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? If he descended, uh, it is the very one who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fulfill the, to, to fill the whole universe. And I believe, and I shared with that a little bit, on why Jesus had to be born in a manger, why he had to become a man, so that he could go and have all authority here on earth as it is in heaven. I taught you that clearly. Do you understand why? He said he had given authority to you and I to have dominion. When he came, he said, that's why he said, now all authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. Therefore, on the basis of that, I say, go out and make disciples. Okay? Then he says there, it was he, Christ Jesus, who gave some, not all, some to be apostles. Do you notice that it is plural, not singular? Every single one is plural, not singular. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. For what purpose? To prepare God's people for works of service. What was the purpose of him giving the gift of the fivefold? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. To equip them for service. Okay, to serve. So that the body of Christ may be built up, encouraged, okay? Until we all reach unity in the faith. Is there unity in the faith? Should there be? And why isn't there? Because of tradition and ill-equipping. Okay? And in the knowledge of the Son of God. And become mature. Is the church mature? I think sub-segments are. And I think some of you are mature. But I think... The vast majority of the church is immature, and the reason is that they have not been equipped by the fivefold ministry. They've been equipped maybe by the one or the twofold, but not the fivefold ministry. Carries on and says there, until we all reach new unity in the faith, in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Who wants to be mature? That means you need to be equipped by all five. Okay? Carries on says there, Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by, by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful schemes. And it is scary the day and age that we live in. And sadly, so many Christians are tossed back and forth by this doctrine and, Oh, this one said this and, Oh, this one said that. Oh, I shouldn't do this, but this one said... How many of you are in that position? Because you listen to too many voices. You listen to too many voices. That's why you toss back and forth by every wind of teaching out there. You, oh, one guy said this, but this, or maybe it's that. No, no, no. God is very clear. God is not confused. You might be confused because you allow certain teaching that shouldn't be imparted, imparted into your life. But God's desire is that we become mature so that we are not tossed back and forth by every wind of doctrine. That when the world says, yeah, but is homosexuality wrong or right? You know what the answer is. You don't have to, do, it's not a debate. The king has decreed already, boom. When he says, um, this is right or that, whatever the case may be, you know why. You're not tossed back and forth because you know what the scriptures say. However, if you're not grounded in the word of God, you will be tossed by everything that this one says and then that one says and, and there will be just confusion that reigns. Because you've been equipped by others instead of the fivefold. 
Then he carries on and says, verse 15, instead speaking the truth in, instead speaking the truth in, love, not in anger, not in resentment, not in hatred, not in bitterness, not in arrogance, hello, we as the church should be able to speak the truth in love, in gentleness, in kindness. Okay? Carries on and says there, We will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as what? Some parts do its work. Is that what it says? As every part does its work. In other words, you have been given a gift by God. Okay? And you are to play a role within the body. And as you, as part of this ligament, does your work, and you do this part, and you, and you, and you, and you serve in the capacity that God has called you, the church functions properly. However, when you neglect to flow and to serve, because all gifts are there too, and if you do not serve in the capacity that you've called to within the church, in the body of Christ, you have a church that limps, cannot function. If you're the hand and you don't do what you're called to do, this is what, we, this is what the church looks like. If you are the, this part of the body and you don't, we look like this. If you are this part and you don't do, do you understand? This is the church today. If you're the leg and... This is the church. We are crawling because there are so few fulfilling their gifts, their calling, their mandate that God has placed upon their lives. What is your excuse? No, I think that when, when you've been in church for years, you have no excuse. I have no excuse. All of us have no excuse. And we need to allow and say, Lord, Lord, come, Holy Spirit, come and shake me so that I can make sure that I serve the way you've called me to. So, but we're dealing now with the gifts of the fivefold ministry. All of us have a gift and we'll deal with that just now. But God has appointed some to be apostles, some to be prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. Some. But he, it's plural. And you'll get sadly, and it's tragic, okay, there are many people that believe that only, you have only now the pastor and the prophet. I mean, pastor and teacher now. The rest have fallen away. Do you know that? It is ridiculous. It is r absolutely ridiculous that this is how some of the church believe and think. Yet the Bible says, I have give, given these gifts all five for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry so that they may become mature. So that they may be fulfilled in their understanding of me, that there may be unity in the body of Christ. So that they may go and impact this world. And the tragedy is that you have one or two of the fivefold equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And then we wonder, why is the church so immature? Why? Because we, as the leadership, have moved away from the mandate and the calling and the structure and the way that God has put things in place. We have moved away from it into a structure and ways that we think are better. Let's have a look at an apostle. Apostle is a good way to remember it for those of you that like to have acronyms and examples and all these kind of things to remember things. You have the apostle, first the thumb, which holds everything together, right? He basically is the one that governs. And you will have a lot of, you, you have resident apostles, you have ones that go out and plant churches. Normally they are very much involved in keeping churches together, functioning properly, the running of churches and that. They're very good with that. They seek balance in the church. That, that's an apostle. Prophet uh, is this finger, okay? In other words, hey, gives direction. This is where we need to go. And hey, what's going on in your life there? You, you often flow, most, he can any time flow in the, 
discernment, wisdom, all those kind of things, and give foretelling. This is what God is saying. This is where we're going. This is what he's saying. This is what is going to happen in our nation, even uh, internationally. You get different prophets, different anointings, and they uh, watch the flock and hear where God is wanting to take the congregation. Number three is the, this one is the evangelist, the gatherer, the, the one that reaches out, hey? He's the one that leads people to the Lord. Let me ask you, I want to find out from you, what's your definition of evangelist? And what is his role in the church? Watch this. He leads people to the Lord. Okay, leads people to the Lord. What is his role? To lead people to the Lord. Now that's your job. He is one of the five called to equip the saints, called to equip you to do the work, to reach the lost. You are the ones that are involved with unbelievers way more than anyone in, in ministry. Let's be honest now. Hello. I don't get to be around unbelievers that much. You have that privilege every single day of your life, most of you. Right? That's why I said you are, the firefold are there to equip the saints who are in the marketplace out there so that they can reach the lost. That is their role. What's an evangelist's role? You know what most of you believe? Most of the church believes? They are to have a stadium of people, lead them to the Lord, and then they lead them to the Lord, and then they bought those newborn Christian spiritual babies, and they go to the next place. Hello. I used the board very carefully and very purposefully because that is m the majority of what happens. There's very seldom follow-up that carries on and long-term in where they say, hey, you need to get plugged into church. They make sure that there's very few. There are some that do that. And if you have a, and I'm not against the evangelical crusade. Please don't, I'm for that. If, they, if those converts, newborn babies, spiritual babies, are not plugged into a local church, I'm very against it. Did you hear me? I'm opposed to that. Because when you drive out and you clean the house, okay, and something that is godly and pure doesn't take residence in that house, what comes back? So I'm not pro that at all. The evangelist is someone that naturally just wants to speak about the Lord all the time and how great is his salvation. And they, yes, they lead people to the Lord easily. It's just natural. You look at this and you think, yeah, you're incredible like that. There is a gifting. But the gifting was given primarily to what? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. That is their prime role. Their prime role is not crusades. It is not. It is not scriptural. Anyone want to differ on that? Their main role is to equip the saints to be evangelists. If I can call it many evangelists. I, people that are also enthusiastic. Are you enthusiastic about sharing the gospel? If you're not, then there's a major gap there that you have to be equipped by evangelists to be enthusiastic and excited to share the gospel. Hello? <sighs> the pastor. What is he? Fourth finger. This is the softest, gentlest, kuchi kuchi. Oh. They always want to make sure you feel loved and you feel cherished. That's, I mean, Russ, you only want to ask, I mean, come on. And it's awesome. And we need that gift. And a church that doesn't have it is. At a detriment. And it's a beautiful gift. But put him in an administrative role where he has to be an administrator and bookkeeper, you will destroy him. Because that is not his calling. That is not his mandate. He's called to e teach and equip you to love people. To love them unconditionally. You would think, yes, I saw my warm club. And he's going to say, oh, don't be like that. You know. Isn't it? That's the way they are. That's the way God networked them, put them together so that he can teach us to love people unconditionally. So that he could shepherd us. That is the role of a shepherd, is to shepherd, and to love, and to teach the church to shepherd, to teach the church to love. That is a shepherd's main role, a pastor's main role. 
Hello? You put him in the role that he's not to. To continuously preach every Sunday. To manage, to write letters, to handle administration. You will suppress that gift like you will never know. And he will never be fulfilled and the church will be ill-equipped. And I tell you now, most congregations are in that scenario today. Then you get lastly the teacher, which is the little finger. Clean your ears. Uh, I don't know if I should clean my nose. <laughs> he gets into places where he says, hey, 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 hey. God's word says this. Why are you involved in this? Why are you doing this? Hey, come, come. God sees this. Let's realign our life. He talks about that. That's, his, that's a gift of teaching. Okay? His main role is to teach what, and his um, focus very much is on doctrine, teaching, making sure that we follow the decrees of the king, our king, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, so that's his pra primary role. And his primary role is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The apostle's primary role is to equip the saints of the work for the work of the ministry. The prophet's role, primary role is to prophesy. No, it's to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The, every single one of them. Okay? Are you with me? Have I got it through yet? All five-fold ministry is a major role. Major role is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The evangelist's main primary goal is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The po the he he, I have appointed some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For what purpose? Who? To the saints, which is the church. Okay? So you need... Or impartation from all five, not onefold. When you are equipped by the onefold ministry, you will never know maturity. That's why I will try and bring in a prophet. If we if we were cash, not, never crash trap, and we had mega bucks like big churches, we'd have a prophet way more often here. But I think Marty's got part of that gift. I think Anshin has. So they. In a, in a sense, you still, do you understand? But if the, I believe if we are equipped by all five, we'll be a way more mature congregation. I know that we will, not I think. And I know every other congregation will be. The problem is, we appoint one man, and we say, you need to do everything. Jy moet koekies en teer gaan drink by die manikies elke dag. Okay? That's what you must go and do. That's your role. And we write it. You will do this. Or we will fire you. Hello. I know I've seen employment contracts, okay? I've read them, okay? In many congregations, I've seen what they say. You will do this. You will do this. You will do this. Instead of we employ you as a man which should be of integrity to fulfill the role that God has placed you there. But you will go and drink tea. You will do weddings and funerals. And, uh, and I spoke to a man this week. And he said, he said, they used to have two pastors. And now I have one in a church of 500 people. Okay. He says he's forever visiting people, marrying people, and burying people. So he gets very little time to study the word of God and to prepare well for Sunday. So he says, I feel ill-equipped. I said, I totally understand what you say. And he says, I don't, I don't hold it against him because there is so little time. He's got so many other responsibilities. How can he do it? And I immediately say, guess who's the problem? The whole structure that has been put in place is godless. It is ungodly. It is unscriptural. It is not right. And that congregation will never be properly equipped. And they will never be fulfilled.
Bible said that each one means everyone, every person has been given a gift. Okay? But to each one, the grace, it is a grace. Whatever gift you've been given, it is a grace. And we'll get to other gifts just now. But each one has been given a grace given to them as Christ apportioned it. Not as you decided, oh, I decide today I'm going to be a pastor. Or I'm going to be a teacher or an evangelist. No, no, no. God apportioned you that gift. Okay? And we need to understand that. And it is a gift of grace that God gave. Now, who is given a gift from Christ? Is it just a select few or everyone? Do you believe you've been given a gift that you need to impart in the church? Do you? 1 Corinthians 7 verse 7 says, I wish that all men were as I am. That's Paul saying, obviously because he so loves God and he has the privilege of sharing the gospel so much. He says, I wish you were like me. But he says there, but each man has, been, has his own gift from God. Each one. In other words, everyone has different gifts. One has the gift one has this gift, another has that gift. In other words, you have this gift, you have that gift, you have this different gift. And imagine if everyone was uh, like Apostle Paul. Would it work? No. The ch church wouldn't function. And not just that, man, it would be crazy. You cannot just have one gift. And that's why God is very clever. He apportioned gifts. And different gifts to every single one of us. In other words, can everyone be a hand? No. Can everyone just be a head? No. We need every single... You, imagine you were just a head. If we chop your body off and there you are sitting as a head. Can it function? No. Cannot. Firstly, you would die. Okay? But you wouldn't even look nice. Because you'll become very wrinkly and white very quickly and then gray and I don't know, it would, so we won't even go down. Do you understand? Every single part of your body, when one part of your body does not function as it should, what do you do? Sorry? You go to the doctor. That's after the stage of what first? You moan and you bitch and you gripe and you squeal and you squirm, isn't it? Why? Because this one is not doing what when you kick your toe what do you do? <laughs> yeah, you have money slapping again. Do you understand? When that happens, he's acting by the way, okay. Very good Hollywood, this man. It is so important for us to understand that when one part does not fulfill its role the whole body suffers. The whole body suffers. And much of the church is suffering because so many of the church are not fulfilling it. Maybe even this church is suffering in certain aspects because you are not doing your job. You are not fulfilling your role, your gift that God has apportioned you. I didn't apportion it to you. And I'm not going to force you to fulfill your, uh, give, uh, fulfill your gift and serve others. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to micromanage you. You stand accountable before God. When you stand before the judgment seat of God, he's gonna, not going to say, oh, you were in Ian's congregation. Come, Ian, come sit, sit here. Hey, hey, please be. No, no, no. He's gonna, he, you're going to stand stock still at Ian before the judge, and you're going to have to give an account. And he's going to say, but I gave you this gift. Were you faithful with it? Or were you not? Or do you, want, or do you want him to say, my good and faithful servant? Or do you want him to rebuke you? Each one has been given a gift to serve others. Look at this. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 to 11 it says the following. Hello, next slide. Here we go. Each one should use what each one, in other words, every one of us, okay, should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. The purpose of your gift is to serve others. Faithfully administering God's gift in its various forms. So there's m various forms, very different gifts. Okay? If, one's, if anyone speaks, 
even speaking is a gift. Some of you cannot speak. Am I right? You, but there are others that are brilliant at it. Okay? It says, if, if anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. You might speak in a school or as a principal or to your, to your leaders in your workplace. Whatever you do, make sure that you speak as though you were speaking the very words of God. Or to your children, any time you speak. Okay? If anyone serves, he should serve, he should do it with the strength God provides. In whatever way you serve, you should do it with the strength that God provides. So that in all things, God may be praised through Christ Jesus. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. However, we need to understand each one should use whatever gift. He has been apportioned by God to the glory of God. Each one of us is given a different gift to meet a different need. Look at this. Romans 12 verse 7 to 8 says, If it is serving, let him serve. Praise God for some of you that are willing to serve. Some of us are terrible at that. We won't mention names. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. Sadly, you have people with the gift of leadership and they get put in political power and they abuse the power and they don't use it to serve people. They do it for self, gratification and indulgence and etc. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him, let him do it cheerfully. Do you think that these are the only gifts that God has given? There are numerous different gifts. I tell you now that all the different gifts that God has given. Some of you have gifts of working with your hand. Hello? Do you know that that's a gift? Some of you are brilliant. I don't. I mean, RP, there's some of you that are brilliant at working with your hands. That's a gift from God. And if you do not believe that, go and give some spanner in some people's hand and you're going to look and you're going to see, think, hi, sister. But it's not hi, sister. They don't, they're not given that gift. I've spoken to some people and I, okay, I do this and this and that. And I, and I look and I think. And then you realize, actually, it's a gift from God. Thank you, Lord. You think, yeah, man, are you dwarf? This, no, it's not that they dwarf. They were not networked that way. How many different gifts are there? These are some that the Bible speaks on, and you can look up there. I've said serving, teaching, speaking, uh, leadership, prophesying, encouraging, administrators, uh, showing mercy, workers of miracles, those able to help others, those having the gift of healing, those interpreting tongue, contributing to the needs of others, those speaking in different tongues, and the list goes on and on and off. The gift of craftsmanship, and you can just add and add and add and add. Do not think, while well, the Bible doesn't say it, therefore I don't have a gift. That is not true. God has given you a gift that I need. And you have a gift that I, that I can contribute into your life. I have a gift that you need and vice versa. And all of us have different gifts because we are part of one body and we to fulfill our different roles. And a kidney cannot do the function of the brain. And the brain cannot do the function of the toe. We all need each other to be healthy. And if all of us fulfill our role, we'll be a healthy, vibrant church. 1 Corinthians 12, 28, 31 says, And in the church God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, and those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with the gift of administration, those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Obviously, this is a rhetoric question, and it's the answer is No. All prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracle? No. Are all craftsmen? No. Are all no, no, no. And we are not all the same. We are all different. And God purposefully did that. Do all, give, uh, all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. 
but eagerly desire the greater gifts, and he carries on into the gifts of the Spirit, which is more, even more important. However, you have been apportioned a skill, if I can put it, a gift that you are to fulfill in the body of Christ, so that we may be a fully functioning, healthy church. But we're not. The church, the universal church is not, because you have so few, few people fulfilling their role, their gifting. They think it is my gift. It's not yours for me to serve you. No, no. Whatever you have, it's come from the gracious hand of God. So, God has given some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, but their main role in the church is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. What is their main role? If I can get that through to you, I've achieved what I want. And I tell you now, it is a hard nut to crack this. Because people do not want to submit to the scriptures. Yeah, but he's paid to, therefore he must win the souls. I'm not going to do it. I pay my tithes, he must win the souls. Come on. I've had that before. That's your role. We're there to pre prepare the people for works of service. Secondly, we're there to, to get the church growing and mature. The fivefold ministry in a congregation will never be mature if you expect the pastor to do everything. Acts 6 verse 2 to 4 it says, So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, This was right in the beginning where Jesus had called his twelve and listen to what he said here. Gathered all the disciples, the followers of the Lord Jesus to grow together and said, in other words, he brings the congregation together. And this is what he said. It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. It would be wrong for us to neglect the ministry of the word. Who was speaking? The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Okay? It would be wrong for us to neglect the word of God and to wait to table. So he says here, brothers, choose. So who are the brothers? The, fire, the pastor, do how many is that it? Who's it? The church, the congregation. Listen to this. Congregants, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. And in most cases, who appoints them? The pastor, or the duemini, or the priest. Yet the Bible says who's to appoint them? Interesting, eh? Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will then turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to what? Prayer and what? The ministry of the Word. That is the role of the fivefold ministry. That is the prime role. That is the prime role in the church, is to in, in prayer and the ministry of the word so that you can be properly equipped. And much of the church is ill-equipped because this does not take place. And in many congregations, they, the pastor is so um, choked by so many things that he was never appointed or called to by God, yet he's been appointed and called to by the brothers to do that. It is sick. It is wrong. It is unscriptural. And for those denominations and congregations that impose that, good for you, you get what you deserve. You are ill-equipped because of your own foolishness of not following scripture. He says, brothers, choose for yourself godly men and appoint them as deacons and let them serve. Can I 
fix the drain and the toilet and lay out this garden and extend this church. I did that. No, I'm not asking. I'd, I've done that. Is it my role, though? Should I have done it? No. That's why when Francois said, no, he's going to do this. Look at this church, the walls. I said, oh, that's nice. And I stood back and I just let, and I thought, I'm not even going to get involved in this because it's actually not my role. Can I do it? Yes. Should I do it? No. Why? Because it distracts from what your main calling is. And the church, the body suffers. I laid out this garden, okay? Fadi was the one that designed it. I was the pit pompis that said, no, yeah, the nearisko kait kom. That's why it was such a blessing for me to see Francois getting involved and Adan building this, I mean, because he's so skilled, and you getting involved and this one getting involved. And it was such a blessing to see that. And what's his name? Um, a great builder. Uh, you know, no, no, Hendrik building this and do you, and so many and some contribute to, to the needs. It's it's fabulous. But whatever your gift was, you were to get involved. And some of you weren't involved because you are serving. And some of you weren't involved because you're arranging and organizing and administrating. And some of you weren't involved because you were doing this and and that's okay. But are you fulfilling your role that you are called and mandated by God to serve his people? That is the question. The once I went to go and see someone because he hadn't been in church for a while. <laughs> and he said to me, I'm leaving, I'm never coming back to your church. I said, oh, that's tragic. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for laughing. <laughs> he said, I'm never coming back. I said, why? He says, no, because you never come and visit do visitations. He said, my previous Dwemini came every single week to my house. So I said to him, please forgive me that I don't come and drink <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I said, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So I said, please, and I meant it. And I'm, I said, I'm sorry. I wish I had the time to. If I had the time, I would do that with everyone every single week. I've even said to my wife, sometimes, hold on, sorry, you need to stop the conversation. I don't have time now. I said, but in heaven, you can talk with me as much as you like. <laughs> but really, he said that to me, I promise you. And he had been years in my congregation, him and his wife. And his wife adored me, but he stopped coming. So I said, why? So he, this is what he said. So I said, I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive me. I said, but I want you to know I will not be coming to drink tea with you. I but I said, if you need me ever, I will be there for you. That's why when his wife phoned me and said, will you please come and serve us and do this memorial? I was there. Because they needed me. And that's and I said, if I come and drink tea with you every week, I will be do, doing a disfavor and dishonoring the rest of the congregation and not be able to fulfill my mandate. And I will not do that. Hello? He was in the congregation a few times after that, after, but he got very sick and I, uh, they called me and I went to pray for them. I was there for them. And eventually they started coming back again. Well, he did. And he was the one that passed away recently. How funny is that that I ended up doing his memorial service? Why? Because they knew if they needed me, I was there for them. God is not so much interested in the speed of your growth as he is in the strength of your growth. If God wants to grow a mushroom, he takes six hours. But if he wants to grow an oak tree, he takes 60 years. God wants us all to be oak trees in his kingdom. And it sadly it takes time. But you have to be faithful in that. If you unplug yourself half the time, you will not get nourished and watered the way you should. Ephesians 2 verse 10. 
For we are God's workmanship, every single one of us, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. God has prepared work for you to do. He prepared it for you to do, not for me to do. And when I do what you're supposed to do, I do the church a disservice. And when you're doing someone else's and having to do their role because they are too selfish to fulfill their gift, the church suffers. And that's why they have what they call the 20-80 principle where 20% does 80% of the work and it's an indictment. It's sick. It should not be in the church of Jesus Christ. Yet that is the case in most churches today. Do you know that? That 20% do 80% of the work. That 20% do 80% of the serving because these 80% are so busy indulging in their own things that they are unwilling to serve the body in the role that they call to. And then you get someone else having to serve in that role that they were never called to. And you must know that the minute that you're distracted and you have too many things that you aren't able to fulfill what you are called to do, what ends up happening? Someone has to suffer and pay the consequence. So, I put this here on screen. This is basically what I would say is the imbalanced fivefold ministry in the congregations. At large, I would say this is, if you probably most congregations, and certainly this is, this is a generalization, okay? I would say that this, this is the pastor in most congregations, okay? He does most of the, 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 the kuchikuing and all of this is, that's most of his time taken up. Then sometimes the pastor has to do the teaching as well. Sometimes he has to even try and, try and steer and direct and manage all meetings and he becomes an administrator. And guess what? He's not called to be an administrator. Sh can he administrate some things? Yes. Should he? Yes. But administrate everything? Well, it's not his mandate. I know some administrators that are brilliant. Like Sonia helped tremendously when she was a secretary. In the, it was incredible. Brilliant. My mom, brilliant at what they did. Evangelist. How many evangelists do you see in the church today? If you feel ill-equipped to share the gospel, then it is the leadership's fault of this church. Those that I'm saying that have been here for years, if you've been here for years and you still feel like that, then it is the leadership fault. I blame Marty, I blame Hannes, I blame Anchin, I blame everyone except me. Now, even me, I have to take it up and suck it up and say, right, how do we change the scenario? Because it is the fivefold that are there to equip the saints for the work of the ministry so that they feel able well-equipped, mature, so that they are able to share the gospel and witness out there. And lead people to the Lord, baptize them, and teach them everything that they are called to know about God. And knowing that they will be able to because they are well-equipped. The next slide shows you a different scenario. And this is what more what I would say from what I read Scripture, and I understand the Scripture, I would say if you had that scenario, you'd have a far more mature church. If I had to look at an ideal situation and an ideal world, I would say if you have the impartation of all five, I think we would be a way more mature, more mature church. That would be the ideal setting. Because... I, even I need to be equipped. And the more I'm equipped by this, this part of the fivefold and that and that, I also get blessed by it. All of us need to be equipped. And the more impartation you have, the better you are for it. So, 
The fivefold ministry, their prime role is to prepare God's people for works of service. Why? So that the body of Christ may be built up and that all of us, every single one of us, may reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God and become mature and attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Next slide. Very important. I thought I'd throw this in. For since in the wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians 1.21 says, Therefore, since in the wisdom of God, the wisdom of who? God, okay? The world through its, th through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness that was preached to save those who believe. God has used the teaching, the equipping that takes place here, the in a sense foolishness, to equip us so that we can become servants of the Most High God. This is the, this is the structure, I believe, that God has put in place. And there's another slide, I just stole that, I don't know if, I hope it's not what you call it, but I took that off there. That is how it should be. All of those involved, and obviously it would be different import, uh, amounts, if I can put it, importation. But you would have all five equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, and you would have a mature church that stands strong. But when you take four of those pillars away, how strong is that church? Will it stand up? I can't fall for sure. That's the church today. Much of the Churches, much of the congregations today are like this because they are not being equipped by the fivefold. That is why I try as best we are able with what we have and those that are willing to come and serve, we try and bring in other people. And I tr try and let other people that are willing to minister so that you, you get different gifts and impartation. That's how the church should function. That is how the church should be equipped. But every single one of us here have been blessed and apportioned different gifts according to the grace God has given. And your gift of service and love, I don't have. But I need it and I want it. But I cannot, tell you, I cannot force it. You have to say, I choose to serve. Can I try and dr draw it out of you? Mm, debatable. But at the end of the day, it's you that chooses to serve your gift to the world and say, I want to serve this world. But God placed the fivefold ministry. That's why I always encourage you to be involved in a congregation. Be faithful. Otherwise, you'll never become mature. You'll never attain to the fullness of Christ. You will be an immature church, a church right till the day God takes you home. If you come one, skip one, come, come near, always jawling, you are never going to become mature. And much of the church today is like that. If you go to school one day a week when you're supposed to be five, are you going to pass the year? Very few of you, if any of you. So the fivefold ministry are there to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And that is, it is, if you want to call it the foolishness of God that he has put in place, may we not deviate from that. And may you not look down on pastors, if I can put it, and I'm saying not just me, others that have been divided so much that they cannot give themselves fully to the actual mandate that they've called which is prayer and the ministry of the word. That they are so split that they cannot actually be highly effective in their role. That's why those in massive congregation can, as an, as an individual pastor, they are, can be so much more, func so much more um, effective. You know in big congregations, I would have one or two assistants that help me with my sermon alone. N not administration or any of those things. I would say, hey, 
Pitbomb is you. I want you to find out. I'm doing a thing on the end times. Where's Gog and Magog? Give me research in a nutshell. I want to know where it is, what it is. Okay, b uh, by the way, draw a map. Now, I have to do all of that on my own. I don't have that privilege. Do you understand that now you have to compete with all these guys? Because this is the day and age that we live in. Because now I'll just use YouTube. I'll just look at YouTube. I'm not going to go to church. But so you can, you never serve in the capacity that you're called to serve. Maybe we be careful of that. But I pray above all that denominations and congregations would realign themselves. That they would say, hey brothers, you appoint people to do this work that I was not called to. This is godless. This is wrong. And boy, if they did that, I can tell you those two congregations would be so much better off. Do you know that this gentleman that spoke to me, he said that six, he's in a big denomination. He said six churches in their denomination are closing every single month. I said, what? No way. Six every single month are closing down. Does that not scare you? It scares me. We are having the great falling away. And part, and part, part, of, that, um, part of the problem is the error of the leadership. Where they are saying, hey, well, what we are doing is not right. We are called to equip the saints. We are not called to administer and to wait on tables and all these. Can we? We can do it. But it means we spread so thin that we are unable to fulfill our main calling. And that is prayer and ministry of the word. And we're going to change that. I tell you, if that had to happen in every congregation on the globe, you will see a different church today. 100% guaranteed. Why? Because you would be, we'd be doing things the way God says we should. And not doing things according to what tradition or the congregants say we will. But praise God for the fivefold, and where we are out of alignment as a congregation, and not following that, you come and see me and help me to restructure things. I, I, I do things the best as I am able and see how we should, um, but I'm totally open to being rebuked and corrected where we are in out of alignment, 100%. Because I want to do things God's way. That has always been my heart. Amen.